Oh, oh, it's the green pen of justice, right? It's the crazy guy, the washed up pro, dastardly. No, it's the guy that knew what was going on from the beginning. And I just need a little bit more, just a little bit more information. And guess what? I'm going to blow it up. I'm going to blow it wide open at the spectacular, the Smodown Spectacular. That's right. One of the most highly awarded, highly revered Smodown events. And I'm going to expose with my little green pen who the Shmominati are. I know every single one of them. I know every dirty deed you've done. I know every trade that you've been a part of. And I know every single thing that you did in 2020 to keep me down. So, why don't you follow me? Ooh, follow me to the Schmodown Spectacular. Me and Mr. Green Pen. I'll see you there. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. It is the finals of the Movie Trivia Schmodown Teams Tournament. We have had so many tournaments, so much happened this season. It, we had a Star Wars tournament, an Inner Geekdom tournament, a massive singles tournament, and now the finals for the teams tournament. And Mark Ellis, what a team final we have. Christian, every one of those tournaments that you just mentioned featured a multitude of surprises that went all the way to the finals. The big surprise here, I do believe Lon Harris actually showed up, and his team is going to have to show up in a big way if they want to topple one of the all-time great squads in movie trivia, Schmodown history, The Odd Couple. It's going to be a tall task for final exam. Are they up to the challenge? It may rely on Paul Oyama's knowledge of old movies movies featuring people that are now dead. This thing is oozing full of story. There is so much story here I and mean, you think of everything that is happening with uh let's let's start with Swag. Swag right now, they are going into the spectacular deep. They have the Star Wars Championship. They're going for the can can Ace Cabrera, the winner of the Star Wars tournament, can he topple one of the greatest champions of all time in Alex Damon. Then you have the reigning inner geekdom champion, uh, Chandru, the chosen. Can he defend his championship right then and there? Plus the fact that they are not out of potentially winning the faction championship. They win this match here today. They have an opportunity not only to get more points on the board to get to the faction championship, but they can be in a third championship title match because the winner of this, the winner of this match plays the team champion Shazam. And will it be Oyama? Will he have an opportunity to win two championships in one year? Lon Harris, never been to a spectacular, never been to a title match. Can he get there? Flip it over, Mark, to the odd couple. When you've got the former champions, Mark Andreco never played in the Schmodown Spectacular, and Jeff Snyder once again, can he be going for his third team's championship should he win here today? Yeah, and Christian, you're looking at a clash of managers for the ages as well, because like you said, Winston Marshall going up against Roxy Stryer, you know you're going to have some great back and forth there, and uh, with apologies to the queen of corruption, Shannon Barney, maybe it is these two that are going to be duking it out, not just here, not just at the Spectacular, but maybe we could see eventually down the road these two vying for manager of the year, for all-time greatest manager. They love their squads. They coach them as hard as anyone, but one of them is going to have that magic touch here today that we've seen both swag and the rock stars have from time to time this season hasn't always been consistent but you have to say that the outcome of this match may determine who has that charmed fate going in to our spectacular 
the Rockstars have been the big spoilers for this whole second half of the season. They spoiled a lot of different factions. Jeff Snyder's run in the singles tournament did that. The Odd Couple has done that. Uh, Stacey Howard did that. They That was the beginning of the end for the Finstock Exchange. Uh, the, you also talk about deception going out. That took more points off the board and potentially clinching the faction championship. So Roxy Stryer has had an incredible second half of the season and is playing spoiler and already has a champion going into the uh, the spectacular with Alex Damon, could she have the odd couple going and give another L to Winston, who she did once again recently? She she gave it back the other the, the last time they played. So she, can she do it again? It's Winston versus Roxy. It is also Oyama versus Snyder again, and we're gonna see if both Andreco or uh, Lon, one of those two, will get into their first Schmodown spectacular. So much. And how did we get here? Here we go. The Odd Couple, you know, I do. I actually have the Odd Couple winning the tournament. Uh, really? My confidence is definitely wavering, given what we just saw. This is elite, elite matchup. And that's what it looked like on paper, and that's what they delivered on screen. <laughs> this is the team that took down the Shire Wolves. Has Jeff Snyder, the best teams player of all time, Mark Andreco, who incredibly balances out Jeff Snyder. The first people to kind of knock Adam Collins off his horse. How is it feeling? I'm, I was the first person to beat Ethan Irwin, and now I'm the first person to co-beat him. So, boom, put that on the five. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, yes. the Harris brothers did take on Mark Andreco and Jeff Snyder one. How did that play out? Final you guys aren't gonna be our final exam. Our final exam is gonna be Shazam, Juan Harris. You and your gremlin brother beat me and Mark a couple tournaments ago. You, you gave us an early exit. Hey, Schmo World, uh, Lon the Delinquent here with my uh, landlord Taco, and uh, I've just been informed that. We're going up again. I got to do this again. It seems like this schedule is never ending. Not sure what I've agreed to. Totally the first that I'm hearing about us being in some kind of tournament. And hey, we're going against former team champs. But we saw what happened in the last round against those former team champs. I saw a well-oiled machine. When Final Exam gets spinners, and it's the mm. Paul Yama show. Lights out, Lidge style. Cut the studio lights out, let the thunder rumble. Because this man is playing on a different level. Now, Oyama, you prevented me from winning a singles title. But here's the thing. This, this team's territory, this is my turf, okay? I'm the natives today, and you're the dead rabbit. The, between Tom and Shannon, I don't know. It, on any given day, it's a lesser of two evils. Uh, at this point, drip, drip, baby. This probably will be the thing that makes it so that you aren't manager of the year and you don't end up winning. Rock on while you're drip, dripping, okay? Snyder's 1-0 against me this season, and he might be odd, but I think it's time to even those odds. Let's do the thing.
I mean, I'm hyped up. I mean, how could you not be hyped up? It is the finals. It is Jeff Snyder getting to another finals, another potential championship. How you don't put this guy in the conversation for greatest players of all time, I don't know. He's done so much. He's been in so many different contenders matches. He already got himself a number one contender match in singles next year. He won uh, four straight matches in the tournament, and now he's got a potential to make it to the to the championship match, and he's got Mark Andreco with him, a guy who's been in... They, they work so well as a team together. Is this their last run, or is this just another way to another run for them as championship and Paul Oyama. Paul Oyama to me, and I had this conversation the other day, I think Paul Oyama at a young age of whatever he is, 23, he is one of the greatest players we have. That This kid he puts me in awe every time I watch him play. It's how does he know what he knows? His new attitude is better. Winston's brought a lot of stuff at him. And you talk about two players that play perfectly together. This weird combination, an odd couple, if you will, of Lon Harris and Paul Oyama seem to work. So this is an intriguing matchup all the way around. They have been a shock as to how well they've been able to play off each other's strengths and bounce off each other. Their communication has been terrific, and that's something that you would expect with a veteran team like the Odd Couple. They've been through the live battles before. They were in front of a 1,000 folks at a sold-out Chicago theater. Final exam, looking to get there. And Christian, if you beat Odd Couple here today, what a statement. That that puts the rest of the team's league on notice here to four. But the Odd Couple, not ready to give up that theme song just yet. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, I think they want to get rid of it pretty fast, actually. They've been liking the Rockstar steam. But I will say that between speaking of the Rockstars, Roxy Stryer been playing big spoiler, having a great second half, and someone who's been having a great season all the way around, looking to get, get some more points to get that much closer to corruption is Winston Marshall of Swag. This is the finals, Roxy. This is yet another finals that Jeff Snyder and yourself have been a part of here. How are the odd couple feeling right now? Amazing. They're feeling amazing. I mean, this is a team that has played together so consistently for so long. They start to feel each other. Uh, they feel each other's energy. They know that this is our tournament to win. And there's no, there's nothing that is against these other guys. One of them who's like kind of homeless and the other that lives on an island or something. Nothing against them. But this is our tournament. They're, this isn't their time to shine. And they're kind of bummed. Wow. Winston, you talk about the bumps, so-called, that uh, you're managing here today, but what a magic touch you've been able to provide, as we alluded to previously, as early as the Star Wars tournament that was held months and months and seemingly decades ago. What has it been about your managing style that has got you to this point on the precipice of another championship in a tournament yet again, and why is that going to be the thing that carries you over the rock stars? <laughs> oh, oh, my bad. I uh, was catching up on some light reading. Uh, well, you know, it's funny. Um, this all kind of started with with Roxy's L's, like our, our overall victory, you know, like we started off with, you know, not even our premier team, even though that team was deadly in of itself uh, with Rogue 2 handing a TKO, uh, you know, off like to Jared and them. So there's that. Uh, then you had the Star Wars tournament that everybody was like, this dude we never heard of before is gonna try and take out Ace and that didn't work out well. And then, you know, Roxy got some revenge. Uh, you know, Jeff came in here and beat Paul in the, in the singles tournament. And that one stung, especially because it came down to half of a gang name uh, for, for Paul to move on to the next round. So that, that, that kind of sucks, but you know, we're sitting here at two and one uh we've got two matches left this season we have this one and then we have the star wars titles belt so i'm really just looking forward to ending this uh you know four four and one on roxy uh nothing to really write home about that's the that's what nba championships are made of you know those amazing types of series so uh you know i do appreciate that the rock stars came to play today they always do i know the odd couple is going to be deadly but I, you know this is another stepping stone it isn't ever about how you start. It's about how you finish. And that's what you're facing here at the end of the year. You are correct. The rock stars had a bit of a rocky start, but in the second half, which is what everybody talks about, we have been annihilating and we are deadly. And I appreciate you acknowledging that, especially mm -hmm. after we are going to murder you today. So it's going to be 
uh, a fun second half for us. And, you know, it's nice that you started strong, but when you finish weak, you're not remembered. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever read this book before, Rox? Yes, why? Because if you remember, Superman doesn't ever die. He just comes back and keeps on whooping on you. So here's the thing. I understand that it's all about how you finish. There's a reason there's four quarters in every game. It's about who comes with those fourth quarter comebacks. I mean, ask your boy Tom Brady, how many times does he have to lose to Eli Manning, uh, you know, before that kind of clicks into place? And yes, I called on the Giants. Just, that's how that's how serious this is, that I called upon the Giants for this. I'm going to stay pretty with my six rings right now then, and you can keep talking about the Giants all you I'm, want. I'm happy, with, I'm happy with my Cowboy 5, and I'm happy watching your boy always lose. I mean, you just saw the whooping he got from Drew Brees and them, like he done too, and what's Cam Newton doing? We're getting off track. The point is, Roxy, you want to talk about finishers. That's what swag does. We finish. We always finish. And today, we're going to finish y'all, and then we're moving on to Spectacular. Swagathon 2020 ends with three championship matches. All Can't right. Wait to watch you drip, drip right out of here, Winston. Thank Cheers, you, to Roxy. Bro. Thank you to Winston. Look, they're, they're heated. They're ready to go. They're both. And as Winston said, he's going to try to get a third title match. But he's also these points are crucial for them to get that much closer to corruption. They can still they still have an opportunity if they don't win here today to catch corruption. But it'll help that much more to get those points to try to catch corruption. The rock stars are playing to get into another title match and to play spoiler. They like playing spoiler. They could potentially play spoiler again in that Star Wars match. So Roxy is knows she's in a good position right now and we are ready for these finals mark are you ready uh, I, I have a question chris i don't know if you saw winston's shot there uh it seemed like there were a lot of lights aimed towards his bed um any insight as to what he might have been filming no comment ladies and gentlemen it's time for the movie trivia schmodown Introducing first, representing Swag, with a record of five wins, one defeat, and three knockouts, the delinquent Lon Harris and the former movie trivia Shmoda. Champion of the world, prime time, Paul Oyama, final exam. Final exam, Oyama Harris pulling off a big win, some would say upset, over the founding fathers, John Roca, Dan Merle, and guys, you made it to the finals. Paul, you're having a great year here too. Lon having a great year in in both teams and singles. Juan, I know that there's a lot of uh, alternative things and thoughts going on in your head. Um, any idea of why you and Paul have been working so well together this season? Uh, I mean, I think I would pick on the your use of the term working. I, I, for, for me, anyway, I think the secret all season that I'm sticking with is uh, doing as little as possible. Uh, trying as little as I can, and just knowing a lot about movies just because I'm so smart. I feel like that's been a really good strategy. I know Paul, in addition to being smart, also like tries, which I guess that works for him. But for me, I'm, I'm not messing with a winning strategy. Yeah, let's talk about what has worked for your partner there, Paul Oyama. Paul, what a run you had in round two to get to this point in that Hepburn category so has there been any back catalog studying of any other older classic movies? What has been your strategy? What has been your prep to this point besides keeping your fingers crossed that your teammate would show up on time? Uh, first of all, rock stars, Rocky Star. I did not know Roxy had bars like that. Um, but, you know, my study habits are my study habits. You know, I, I watch, watch the movies I love and, and, you know, knowing about movies is what this game's all about. Um, I'm just excited to get back in the ring here today with Lon. And, uh, you know, as 2020 has shown us, having a Harris on your team leads to success. I want to stay here with you, Paul, because um, as we mentioned last time, this is an opportunity. You're, you would say, and I think you're on record saying that last spectacular, you know, you headlined it, but you would say it's probably the worst match you played in your career. So is it is getting is getting to the spectacular, not only for a team's title opportunity, but to redeem yourself in the spectacular spotlight? Is that one of the, the goals here today? 
Uh, this is a different league, so I think the approach is just going to be different. I mean, yeah, I, I would I would certainly hope that's the worst match that I ever play in this league. Um, but no, I mean, you got to take it day by day, and each match is a new match. And, you know, having Lon by my side is just different. It's, you know, we are not the same thing as me on my own. And uh, us together is what got us here. And I think it's what it's going to do us you know, well today. All right. Well, thank you to both Final Exam, Polo Yama, and Lon Harris. Gentlemen, good luck, and we'll see you in a little bit. And their opponents, representing the Rockstars, with a record of eight wins, four defeats, and four knockouts. They are the former movie trivia showdown team's champions of the world, the Android, Mark and Draco. And the Insider, Jeff Snyder, the Odd Couple. The Odd Couple, Snyder and Draco. Gentlemen, this is kind of old territory for you guys, being in a position to get to another title match. You, when, when the odds were against you and people were like, well, maybe they're going to break up. It's the other teams that seemed like, oh, maybe they're going to break up because the Odd Couple seemed to prove strong. Mark and Draco, same kind of question I posed to Juan. What is it about you and Snyder that works so well as a team? I think that uh, we have always been 100% up front with each other. Uh, so the, the level of trust and honesty between us as players and as friends is really, really tight. And ironically, over this uh, this lockdown, I think Jeff and Roxy and I have all become closer in, in, a, in a weird way. Um, so, you know, and also too, we've been, we've been on fire. We've been playing. I think, I think our last match was probably the best match I ever played. And, uh, I'm just excited to be, you know, not disappointing Roxy because, uh, Roxy has, Roxy was integral into why Jeff and I work so well, why we listen to each other, why we're, we're, we're a team. It's not one of us is, if one of us drops the ball, the other one picks it up and vice versa. And we don't drop the ball that often. So. Okay, um, Jeff, I guess I'll thank you for having a shirt on. Um, you've been a part so far. of many a five-round match, and you know what that features. The speed round, the lightning rounds, but maybe haven't seen one quite like this in the virtual world. Any hesitation on your and Andreco's park? Any added training when it comes to the lightning round, or do you approach it with the casual devil-may-care attitude that you really approach the entire showdown with? Yeah, I, I have not changed anything up for this match. I am uh, going with the flow, baby. You know, just just seeing where each round takes it. Take it round by round. You know, not trying to get ahead of myself. I think that I uh, I did that in New York, playing it against Oyama, and it cost me a singles title. And uh, I'm just trying to stay level-headed. It's, it's a long game. I know there's some added incentive for both of you guys. Obviously, Snyder, you got an opportunity here to get your third team's championship if you get to the Spectacular here. And Draco looking to play in your first Spectacular. But not only that, from both of you guys, well, Mark and Draco specifically, you get a shot to go for your second championship, Mark, but you also have a shot to take it away from Bibiani. So I'm sure that's some incentive there to play uh, as, as then we see on the other side of that, uh, Snyder gets to beat Oyama again if that is indeed the outcome here today. Yeah, the uh, the only times I've beaten Bibs have been in uh, Patreon matches. So they have asterisks next to them. And to beat Bibs and Brendan and give Jeff his rightful place on the Mount Rushmore by being the only guy to win a three teams belts three different times. Um, I'm doing this for Roxy and for Jeff and a little bit for me. What's going on? Movie trivia showdown. Pretty excited about our brand new sponsor, HelloFresh. It offers convenient delivery right to your doorstep and home cooking with the whole family. Recipes are easy to follow. It's quick to make, simple steps, and the pictures guide you along the way. So people, uh, a lot of people on this show, very easy. You say, oh, look, it's pictures. Roke is going to have a blast with it. The good news is that there's something for everyone, including low-calorie, vegetarian, and kid-friendly recipes, which is something I definitely need, I can tell you that. It's over 90% of ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure that the freshest recipes are delivered right to your door. Look at what HelloFresh is doing, and this is the best part about it. You go to HelloFresh.com slash SEN80. You got to use the code SEN80 to get a total of, wait for it, $80 
off across five boxes, including free shipping on your first box. One more time. Listen to this. Listen to my voice. HelloFresh.com and use the code SEN80. Get that $80 off across five boxes, including free shipping on the first box. It is HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. All right, the odd couple, the former champs are here, and here are the final exam team of Paul Good Young. gentlemen. Lon Good Harris. Well. All Much right. Respect. So we are now going to move them into position, Mark, and we get ready for round number one. Round number one in this matchup that we'll see the champion of this tournament. It's just like a normal round number one in teams. Eight questions from eight different movie trivia schmodown categories are asked. <laughs> as soon as you hear the question, you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever writing surface, whatever you writing utensil you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please reveal what you wrote for your answer to the camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. What am I getting at? It's a team matchup, but it's an individual test of movie trivia knowledge in round number one. Each question's worth a point. No penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. I'll remind each team you have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the five-round match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to buy yourself a little more time, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the match. You may initiate the challenge. We'll bring your manager in, and they will confirm, ratify. We'll have some spirited debate back and forth and ultimately settle on the correct call. Again, you only have one of those per match. If the challenge is ratified, then you will retain usage of the challenge for later in the match. All right. So the round number one rules have been read. We ask Jeff Snyder, are you ready? I just saw what Rachi typed in the chat and I think I need a second. Lon Harris, are you ready? Uh, yes, I'm ready. I don't. I never read. Mark Andrejko, are you ready? I used your brother's Amazon too. I'm ready. <laughs> and Paul Oyama, are you ready? Set your clocks. Let's do this. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Five rounds in the tournament finals. Round number one, question number one in the realm of action adventure. Gentlemen, Mary Elizabeth Mastri Antonio plays Maid Marian and Christian Slater plays Will Scarlet in which film based on the Robin Hood legend? Right, Christian, a uh, valuable lesson for all of us at this season of giving. Make sure you're on your own Amazon account when making purchases. Yes. And five. Unless you're live. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Hands up. And Jeff Snyder. I don't know about this one. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? Yes. Lon Harris. Yes. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Mark Andreco. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And Paul Oyama. Didn't have it. Didn't have it. Paul Oyama misses that one. All right, and, a, and first blood already by the odd couple as we get to Oyama. question number two. All right, I will be delivering this next question in Kevin Costner's British accent. In the category of family films, what color of slipper does Dorothy get gifted by Glinda the Good Witch of the North in 1939's The Wizard of Oz? Christian, I caught the uh, uh, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves the other day. Great, great movie. Really good one. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we go with Lon Harris. Uh, the Ruby slippers. Yes. Uh, Mark and Draco. Ruby, and in the book, they're actually silver. Uh, yes. Uh, Paul Yama. I shouldn't have read the book. I also got silver. And Snyder. I didn't put ruby, but I think this still counts. Red. Red, red counts. We have red or ruby. We have red or ruby. That counts. So that counts. So Paul Oyama uh, off to a little bit of a tough start here. Oh, and two for Oyama. So we see ourselves right now. Where's PJ Campbell? Sorry. All right. We see ourselves now. 4-2. Four, 4-2 two. Four, two as we get to our next question. Here's question number three. Dramas. What recent film stars Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson as two men who try to maintain their sanity while living on a remote island during the 1890s? Speaking of maintaining sanity, they referenced the NFC East, Christian, and uh, your Giants sweeping the season series against my team, but 
I don't that know if that's going to do anything for either one of us. Five. It's like beating a minor league. Four, three, like two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down, please. And Mark Andreco. The White House. Yes. Paul Oyama. Park. The White House. It's Jeff Snyder. The Lighthouse. Lon Harris. The Lighthouse. Okay, so we tiered up six. 6-4. Six, 6-4 four. Six, four is the score here. 6-4. Uh, and Lon Harris has not missed, and neither has the odd couple. As we get to our next question, Mark. That's in the world of new releases. Movies that have been out relatively recently. It, it's it, Theaters are tough. The question for a point. What 2019 movie was directed by Roland Emmerich and stars Ed Scrain and depicts a famous World War II battle? Ed Scrain. Ed Scrain. I, I think Scrain's probably closer. <laughs> I honestly don't know that one. Nick Scrain. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Pens down, please. And we start with Paul Yama. Not a great look for my home state. Midway. Yes. Jeff Snyder. Midway. Lon. I also had Midway. Mark Andreco. Midway. Odd couple on fire right now. So is Lon Harris and Paul Yama making a comeback here as we now have eight to six as we get to our next question. Eight to six. Here it is. Fantasy sci-fi. Which 2005 sci-fi comedy based on a novel by Douglas Adams stars Martin Freeman, Sam Rockwell, and Zoe Deschanel? So you can feel yeah. the intensity in it, Mark. It's just like well, these are just four great players trying their hardest. I, I thought the final exam was the most relaxed I've ever seen them in our pre-interview, but now Five, they're locked. Four, three. Let's look at Taco. Two, Focus. one. Lock Pens in. down, please. Jeff Snyder. Is it the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? It is. And Lon Harris. It is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mark Andreco. <laughs> So long, and thanks for all the fish. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And Paul Oyama. He stole the quote, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. All right, so this is some battle we have here as the odd couple has not missed. Neither is Lon Harris. We see ourselves 10-8, 10-8 so far, and we get to our next question, Mark. This is question uh, number six. The battle for the tournament, life, love, and the universe. In the world of comedies is where we go now. Okay. The hip-hop duo Kid and Play star in what 1990 comedy that also features Martin Lawrence? Great one. Great one, great one. That's all I can say. It's just great one, great one. Uh, yeah, this is I, a great, great. Good. Five. Four. Great, great. Three. Two. One. Pens down, please. Lon Harris. Uh, I have House Party. Correct. Mark Andreco. House Party. Paul Oyama. Makes it look like House Party 2. House Party. And Jeff Snyder. <laughs> what I'm going to do after I win this match is throw a house party. Look at that. I know. You can see Roxy, Stry Roxy Stryer <laughs> smiling. Uh, well cool. Still, let, let things. 12 10. 12 10. 12 10. And now we get to question number seven. Question number seven in the realm of horror slash thriller. Who directed the first installment of the Saw franchise? You ever, uh, you ever see the Lighthouse? I have not seen it yet. Yeah, the, the Wanger no. boys told me I might like it, but they, they didn't sell me. It, it, it could go be. either way for you, from how I feel. Five, yeah. four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And Mark Andreco. Uh James Wan. Yes, uh, Paul Oyama. Big homie, James Wan. Snyder. James Wan. Lon. Uh, Mark, see the lighthouse, and yes, it's James Wan. So look at this. What a match. So Paul Oyama having a very good comeback here. He hasn't missed since those first two, but the, but Snyder and Draco and Lon Harris teetering on a perfect round so far. If the three of them get this, they will get a bonus question. Mark, eighth question. Here it is. And we wait to see who continues to teeter in the world of animated movies. Thank you, Hamilton's Hands. It could be stop motion, could be drawn by hand, could be on a computer, any variation thereof. For a point, the question. A group of penguins 
named Skipper, Kowalski, Rico, and Private are the leads in a 2014 spinoff of what animated franchise? Just, just to be clear, you're asking for the mother franchise, right? Yes. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, pens down. Paul Oyama. Madagascar. Yes. Jeff Snyder. It's a better Guns N' Roses song, Madagascar. Perfect round for Jeff Snyder. Lon Harris. Yeah, they're the Penguins of Madagascar. Perfect round for Lon and for Snyder. Let's make it I mean, three. Draco. Madagascar. All right. So the odd couple now has an opportunity here to get a double perfect round from both Snyder and uh, and Draco. However, Lon Harris also an opportunity to get one more extra point. Paul, you're going to sit this one out. And Snyder and Draco and Lon, same as before. Here is the question for your bonus round. Here it is. All right. Which action franchise features... Such actors as Angela Bassett, Jeremy Renner, and Ving Rhames. I kind of like those penguins, you know? Yeah. Leno. Oh, you're, 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 giving, you're giving them the Leno? It's a Leno. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, Snyder for the perfect round. Beating us is going to be Mission Impossible for final exam. Correct. Lon. Uh, they win every single time, the Impossible Mission Force. Every single and, time they achieve their mission. And Mark and Draco. <sighs> Mission Dunch, Impossible, Dunch, you've got Dunch. it. All right, so now they go up by three here. Odd Couple goes up by three. Two perfect rounds by the other. 18, 15, and we get to our second round here. Mark, how's it go? Round number two is the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and ultimately justice will be written, justice will be served, justice will be done because six questions will be coming at each team, courtesy of whatever genre of movies you spin. Each question's worth two points, no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes from two to one point now again it's the team round and don't worry round number two you actually can confer with your teammate for each and every question slash answer and then you say well can't the other team hear us talk well they're going to be out of the stream so whoever's fielding questions the opposite team will be in a different stream being monitored and they will only be brought back after the questioning has finished being administered if there are any steal opportunities they will then be presented with those so christian it's going to be up to the odd couple to decide if they want to spin first or defer to their opponents. Ross, you got 60 seconds to decide that starting now. I love you guys so much. I'm so proud of you and so impressed. You're killing it so far. Uh, the energy is there. You guys have got this. You're cool. You're calm. You're collected. You're on fire. How There's, do you another, C this? Word. There's another C word that we don't want to be, though, which is cocky. That's, That's very true. Exactly. Here's the no, deal. Exactly. It's a long game. This is a very long game. It's a tonight. very long game. And we are playing very well, um, but we are playing better, and let's continue to do so. Should we have them go first again, Andreco? I defer to you. I, yeah. I think let's so. Have them go first and see if uh, Winston's head doesn't explode, because I swear it was going to when Oyama got those first two questions wrong. Yeah, I think I threw him off. You guys got this, guys. You're All right. So both uh, Snyder and Andrico, you can stick around to see what your opponents spin. And then once that happens, then you got to drop out. Roxy, you can stay behind. Just make sure that you have your hands up during the round. All right. So we're going to remove Andrico, going to remove Snyder, remove Roxy, bring back Winston and Lon and Paul Winston. You got 60 seconds to talk to your team starting now. Hey, first of all, uh, great job, y'all. Wait, Lon, I'm so proud of you on that perfect round, son. Paul, that's how you recover, boy. That's how you recover. Now that we've got about 45 seconds, uh, you know, without drunk uncle throwing in his bad dad jokes, let's talk about this real quick. You got your three JTEs, use yep. them when you need them. Sure. Uh, we have the challenge, so I'm on standby for all that. We've talked about what we want to what we want to do here, so let's not get all out of shape. It's a long game. This is only round two, so let's just go. How hand many of these are there? Oh, dude, there's five this time. It's a little bit oh. more. It's a little bit more. But well, I, we're only for one, so there's only four but, left. Lon, guess yeah, what? If you, e, you know? Lon, if you win this, I actually have a permanent residence for you. 
Is it Jeff's dad's house? Yes. Oh, sweet. It looks pretty I, I got a key, bro. We'll handle it. Ten, ten right? seconds. Ten seconds. So with that, let's spin the wheel, y'all. Let's go. All right, the wheel's going to go up. And the first spin by final exam is in. Of course, they can spin again if it hits something they don't like, unless it hits the dreaded opponent's choice. But we're going to find out, Mark, in just a moment. You think Winston was talking about you or me with the bad uncle joke? Uh, neither. Oscars. Ooh. Oscars. 60 seconds to decide if you want to stick with Ooh. Oscars. Boys, starting now. Um, I don't hate it, but I think we should spin again. I, yeah, I, I can... Not not to quote our, our prime enemy here, but I concur. So why don't we go ahead and spin again? Yeah, let's spin that uh, again. All right, here it is. So now whatever final exam gets, they're going to have to keep. That's right. I'm working on that wheel, Christian. It is. Spinners, opponent's choice. And it's not looks be opponent. Like it is not. It looks like it's going to be Festival Darlings. Oh, Festival look. Darlings it is. All right. So now we're going to have the odd couple drop out. Mark Andreco and Snyder will drop out to the next room. Roxy Schreier will stay behind. She just has to make sure she has her hands up during this round. And as soon as we get word that the odd couple is out, then we will begin this round. Six questions in the realm of Festival Darlings. All right. So now the odd couple is in a different room. Roxy, if you can keep the hands up. Thank you. And gentlemen, here's your first one. What is Nicole Barber's profession in the awards favorite marriage story? She's an actress, right, Lon? Yes, yeah, yeah, she's the he's the director, she's the actor. Yeah. Actress, final answer. There you go. Two points. Yeah. Question two. Who stars as unlucky casino cooler Bernie Lutz in 2003's The Cooler? It's William H. Macy. Yes. William H. Macy, final answer. Two points. Question three. In 2016's Lion, little Saru gets separated from his brother and family through what mode of transportation? It's the train station, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I was just going to say train. Train, final answer. Correct. Two more points. All right. Question number four. Which actor plays a cult leader named Patrick in the 2011 drama Martha Marcy May Marlene? It's a John Hawks. Yeah. John Hawks, final answer. Two more points. I was struggling Christian. to pull his name, but you got there immediately. That's Storming through this Love round like they did not one match ago. All right, we're, we're looking at question five here. Yep. All right, question number five, gentlemen, in Festival Darlings. Here it is. Who directed the festival and Oscar favorite, Shine, starring Jeffrey Rush? Ooh. Who directed Shine? It's, an, it's somebody Australian. It's got to yeah. be. Yeah. The name's not coming to me. Let's go to multiple uh, choice. Yeah, multiple, yeah. All right, multiple choice. Is it A, Philip Kaufman, B, Gregor Jordan, C, Richard Eyre, D, Scott Hicks? I think it's Scott Hicks. Yeah, let's go with that. Scott Hicks, final answer. That's correct for one point. Yeah. So here is your final one. In the miseducation of Cameron Post, who plays the title character, a teenage girl who is forced into gay conversion therapy? It's Chloe Grace Moretz, Long. Yep, you're right. Chloe Grace Moretz, final answer. What a round by the odd couple here. 26-18, only going to multiple choice once in Festival Darlings. Cleaning up no multiple, no, excuse me, no steals available. Amazing round there for the uh, final exam. All right, guys, going to remove you here and going to bring back the odd couple. All right, Jeff Snyder has returned. Mark Andreco has returned. No steal opportunities on the board. Gentlemen, 26-18 is the score at the moment. The uh, final exam only had to go to multiple choice once on Festival Darlings. All right. So now Roxy Stryer will be back for 60 seconds to talk to your uh, competitors before they spin, starting now. So they watch decent movies. Fine. Doesn't matter. Let's spin this wheel. Let's see how we do here. You guys know every single question, whether you think you know it or not, you guys communicate on that. We've seen what happens when we don't. We have to communicate. We're going to have to play a very damn close to perfect game right now to win this. So you guys are doing an amazing job. This doesn't mean anything except for the fact that, okay, so they watch some good movies. We should be proud of them for that. How are you guys feeling? Okay? Good. Yeah. I mean, would have liked to have gotten some seal opportunities, but what can you do? Yeah, yeah, they were they were all movies you would have seen. You had a perfect round on that one, Jeff, for yeah. sure you would have. It is what it is. Let's spin the wheel, see what we get. All right, so the wheel is going to come up here, and here is the first spin by The Odd Couple. 
Don't be afraid of multiple choice if you need it. We've got a long game, guys. And they need to find something they're good at. They're trailing by eight. We're good at everything. And Mark. looking at Viola Davis, 60 seconds to the side. How do you guys feel on this one? I think we should do it, Mark, just because. Yep, 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 yep. yep, yep. yep. You know what you yep. think? Yep. Yeah, I think it's, it's, yep. Yeah, I think we're ready for this. Okay. Yep. I all right, my old David. You guys got this. Stay I, cool, right. calm, collected the whole time. All right, so we need to lose uh, Paul Oyama. Lon Harris is already out. So and Drake, I'll keep your hands. Way, we're the odd couple. You said that the odd couple had a good round before, but we're the odd couple. Don't forget that, Chris. All right, so now we are waiting for. We did find out. Okay. All right. So, Mark, we're going to get six questions in the realm of Viola Davis films. Viola Davis on the wheel for the odd couple. Always talk, Mark. Always talk. Yep. All right. Here we go in the world of one of the most talented performers on Earth, Viola Davis. And your first question for two points. Viola Davis plays the character Amanda Waller in which comic book movie? You got that one, Mark? Suicide Squad, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Suicide Squad, final answer. We'll give you two points for that. All right, that was, que that was question number one. Here's question number two. All right, gentlemen, Viola Davis won an acting Oscar for what 2010s drama? It's, uh, fences, Mark. It's fences, yeah. Fences, yeah. final answer. That is right. correct for two more points. All right, here's the question number three. All right. What MCU actor co-stars with Viola Davis in the thriller Black Hat as the character Nicholas Hathaway? I know this, it's Chris Hemsworth, right? Yes. All right, Chris Hemsworth, final answer. I like that movie, no one else did, but we give you- No one points. else saw it. It's awful, Mark. That was question three, question four. I remember enjoying it. For two points and a tie, 2018's Widows takes place in what United States city? It's Chicago, Mark. Take it away. Chicago, final answer. Didn't know if you're talking to me or your team, maybe you're correct either way. That's two more points. All right, I'll, I'll note that next time, sorry. We find ourselves tied, but the odd couple still has two more questions remaining, so they could see as much of a four point lead going into round number three. Here's your penultimate question. Who plays Viola Davis's husband in Prisoners. Oh, I just watched. Oh, it's it's Terrence Howard, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Terrence Howard. Final answer. The original roadie. That is correct for two more points, and the odd couple takes the lead and looking for more here with this final question in the wonderful world of Viola Davis. All right. Here's the Viola last Davis question. Plays, Viola Davis plays CIA director Isabel George in what 2010 film co-starring? Tom Cruise. Would be Lions for Lambs? Could that be what it is? No. I got it. What do you think it is? I think it's Night and Day. Five. Oh, I think you're right. I think Four. you're right, actually. Night and Day, final answer. Go ahead, go ahead. Night and Day, final answer. That is correct for two points. Good and job. Christian, we knew they had to wow. have a big round, so what wow. did they do? They swept it without needing to go to multiple choice one. Nicely done, Jeff. Nicely and done, my friend. Incredible round by the odd couple. Incredible round as we wait for final exam. All right, so Paul and Alon, no steal opportunities here as the odd couple has a perfect round as they go 30 26. 30 26. Good stuff, guys. And now we Thanks, bring guys. in the managers, and now we get to round number three, Mark. It is the betting round. How's it go? It is the betting round in which a wager will be placed by each team. Before we get to the wager, the team in the lead, the odd couple, is going to spin that wheel. Remember the wheel from round number two? Going to give that one more spin. It's going to land on a category, and that is the category we will pull one question from. The question is asked to the field of teams. Teams may confer on their answer before we ask the question. That's when we get that wager. That's why it's called the betting round. Teams may wager as many as three points. They may wager as little as zero points. If they get the ensuing question correct, they gain <coughs> that many points. If they miss it, they lose that many points. So Christian, we've seen leads exchange hands many times in betting rounds past to determine the outcome today. We first go to the odd couple to give that wheel one more tumble. All right, so this is going up and the wheel is going up here. And here's the spin. Oh, good spin, guys. Good job. 
And... Ridley Scott. All right, so the way we're going to we're switch this up a little bit here. So we're going to give uh, Roxy and the Odd Couple, you guys are going to have an opportunity to either go first or second. And whoever decides to, uh, if you guys decide to go, whoever goes first, the other team will be put into a separate room. So Odd Couple, Roxy, what are you guys going to do? We're going to go second. second. Gonna well, go we second. Get to, well, we get to, we won't. Get the same no, question. But we won't know if they got it right, or will we know if we got they got it right first or second? No. We'll not know we until. Won't. Okay. I just want a clarification. So you'll, you'll you'll know after you an, after you answer the question. All so right, we're going to go into this stream yard right now. Bye. All right. Okay. So let's drop you guys out. We're going to drop out the odd couple, and Roxy Schreiber will also drop out uh, of this. So as soon as we have confirmation from all three of them that they're out, you guys will tell us your how many points you are betting, and then we will ask the question. All right, so the odd couple is in a separate room. Now, Winston Marshall and uh, the final exam will figure out how many points they are going to bet. Once they figure out how many points they're going to bet, they are going to get a question in Redley Scott. You have 30 seconds to decide how many points starting now. I'm gonna do this fast because I can make signs too, Roxy. You guys run better than the government. All right, cool. Uh, listen, listen, what listen, do. Uh, I'm thinking receiver. Yeah, I agree. I think that's. I, I think that's. Say, a, I was going to say running back or receiver. So if you're good with receiver, yeah, I think it's receiver. Think, receiver all day. I think we should, we should go receiver now. All right. Let's you go. Guys you guys don't really need to talk in code at this point, but it's fine. I love it. Uh, I, I welcome it, but please it's do okay. it in the chat. This is so for the see. fans. We don't all want right. them to know what we're thinking. Of. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. All right. So you can. Oh, that's that's actually right. Can you actually now put your point system in the private chat for me? Sure. Please? I got it. Here we go. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Great. All right, so Winston, we're going to drop you out. All right, gentlemen, are you ready for your question? Yes. All right, here it is. In the category of Ridley Scott, what do the characters call the ship computer in 1979's Alien? It's, it's mother, mother, right, Lon? Yep. It's mother. mother, final answer. That is, that can't say anything. Can't say anything. So there you oh go. That's boy. your final answer. That's, that's your final correct. answer. That is your answer. I'm in suspense. All right. Well, we'll let you guys know as soon as your uh, opponents come in. All right. We're going to drop you out. They may already know, Christian. I'm going to drop you out. And now we are going to drop them out, put them in a separate room. They're going to go to a different room. Uh, Paul Yama and Lon Harris and Winston. Uh, all three of them will go to a different room. And then we'll bring back the odd couple and Roxy Strider. All right. So here we go. So, all right. So Roxy and the odd couple. Roxy, you have 30 seconds to decide how many points you are going to bet. You want to talk in code and then you're going to put it in the private chat starting now. Oh, in code? What do you need code? Just put it in. It's up, it's up. All right, then you can just put it. Then just put it into the private okay. chat now. We know how we're feeling about this one, so I'm going to put it in right now. Okay. All right. So we have both the point system in. All right. So we're going to drop Roxy out. Jim, you're going to get the same question that your opponents got. Here, Here we can discuss, question. right? You can. Thanks. Here is the question: What do the characters call the ship computer in 1979's Alien? I know it. Okay. Mother. Mo uh, yeah. Mother. Yeah. yeah. Mother is the final answer. All right. Okay. So that is your answer. And we will bring back final exam. We'll reveal and we'll delineate points accordingly as a nation and indeed a world awaits the fate of the betting round. All right. So now we have final exam and the odd couple are back. The question on the table. The question on the table is what do the characters call the ship computer in 1979's Alien? Both teams answered mother. Correct answer on both. The odd couple bet two points and final exam bet two points. So we see ourselves at 32, 28, 32, 28 is the score at the moment here. 32, 28. All right. So now we're going to get into the speed round. Mark, how's it go? That's right. I can't remember a betting round, Christian, recently where some sort of points didn't exchange hands. But here we are with a four point lead. <laughs> for the odd couple and as christian said now we get to the speed round it is the team format it is the virtual lawnmower man world we live in so here's how it works teams will decide 
which member wants to take the A set of questions and which member is going to take the B set of questions. Each set features five questions. You and you alone will have 30 seconds to answer as many of those five questions as possible. Each question is worth one point. There is a penalty for missing a question. So if you get it wrong, you lose a point. There is a third option. You can simply hear a question. If you're not sure of the answer, say pass. We'll move on to the next question. Any questions that were passed, we will go back to, provided there's still time in the 30 second window. You never have to answer a question. You may say pass as many times as you like. So we're gonna drop out final exam and now it's gonna be up to Odd Couple alongside their manager, Roxy Stryer of the Rockstars to decide whether they would like to answer the A set first or defer to their opponent. So far it's working for us to go second. I think that we should stay going second. How do you guys feel? It yeah. really doesn't make a difference in this round for me. It so doesn't. yeah, I'm let's going let with... them go first anyways. Great. First is the worst. And remember, pass if you don't 100% right. know. We can yeah, take our that, time in this. That's even the most though it's 60 seconds. It's passing. And if you do not know the answer, not to answer because a wrong answer is a negative point. You guys okay, are it's, it's, on 60, that. it's 60 seconds, right, Mark? 30, 30, 30, 30 each. 30 each. 30 each. So that's six seconds a question. So if you you got some, you got a little bit of wiggle room for us both. Man. Great. All right. Happy to be a second. Thank you, Roxy, guys. Roxy, you can stay, uh, and Odd Couple will will drop out. All right. So oh, we got are, it. we're going to remove Odd Forever. The Odd Couple. Odd Couple's yeah. dropping out. Ooh, keep me here. Love this. Going to give Bye -bye. Winston, Winston sixty seconds to talk to your team before they start. Okay, so the first thing that's funny to me is that they keep having us go first because they're scared. They know that they have to try and keep you flat-footed, but it's not working. We're rolling through this, so let's keep it moving. Remember, passing is your friend. It is better in this situation to pass and not lose a point. As they were talking about the math, I'm sure you heard all that, six seconds per question, etc. So Real that is what is do you, How do you feel about first going first or second? Do you have any strong, do you want, to, do you want me to go first or how do you feel? I, I have no strong feeling, whatever you, you feel more comfortable with. Let's, go, let's, have you go, let's have you go first this time. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I agree a thousand percent. So right. yeah, remember, take your time, pass is your friend. All right, so Lon Harris, thank you, Winston. We're gonna remove, and then we're gonna remove Paul. Um, and Paul, make sure you have your hands up, even though it really doesn't matter. And Winston, same thing. Mm -hmm. There is gonna be a 30 second timer on the top clock up there, Winston, uh, Lon, so you can see it. Okay. So that way you know. And Mark, you wanna go through the rest? Okay, Lon, you win. Well, you, you win going oh, first. awesome. Oh, in, okay. in the speed yeah, round, you get to go first. first is the only thing okay. you've won thus far. So keep Got in it. mind, I'm going to ask you five questions. You have 30 seconds to complete answering all five questions, however you wish. You want to lobby an answer? Fine. If you get the point, if you lose the point, if you say pass, regardless, I'm not going to tell you whether your answer was correct or incorrect. We're not right. going to reveal any of that until everybody has gone and we sort and tally the points at the end. Is that, is that pretty clear? Understood. Okay, and just to make sure the connection works okay, I'm gonna ask you a random question and just feel free to answer, but try to do it as quickly as possible. Okay. What is your dog's middle name? Uh, Reginald. That sounds accurate. And uh, last thing before we get with the question here, Lon, your 30 second clock does not start until I am finished asking question number one. Okay. All right, and here we go. Which actor plays musician Bad Blake in Crazy Heart? Uh, Jeff Bridges. Who stars as Catherine Mertoyle in 1999's Cruel Intentions? Pass. Who directed The Road Warrior? Uh, George Miller. What year saw the release of Unforgiven? 1990, uh, 1991. In what film does Nicolas Cage have to steal the Declaration of Independence? National Treasure. Who stars as Catherine Mertoyle in 1999's Cruel Intentions? time that's fine <laughs> okay I was gonna pass anyway <laughs> all right it's gonna remove lawn gonna bring in paul all right and mark all right all right mr oyam i believe we've been here before once or twice <coughs> Paul, here's how it's going to work. Five questions, 30 seconds. Um, I am not going to tell you whether you got the question correct or incorrect. You're not going to know the outcome until everybody's gone and we tally up the points afterwards. So uh, I do want to ask you a practice question just to make sure our connection is okay. So try to answer this as quickly as you can. 
What is the biggest island in Hawaii? The Big Island, Hawaii Island. I, and I, I'll accept you either answer. Roxy, uh, can I, Roxy, can you get your hands up, please. And uh, Paul, last thing before we get going here, uh, your thirty-second window does not start until I've completed asking the first question. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, here we go. And this is the A set of questions. This is the B set of questions. Here we go. All right. Who plays the lead role of Larry Donner in Throw Mama from the Train? Danny, uh, pass. What actress plays Maria Von Trapp in The Sound of Music? Julie Andrews. What year saw the release of Martin Campbell's Casino Royale? 2006. Who directed Sean Connery in The Untouchables? Uh, Brian De Palma. Paul Newman and Robert Redford played two grifters in what 1973 film? The Sting. Who plays the lead role of Larry Donner in Throw Mama from the Train? Billy Crystal. Shit. That completes Paul Oyama's question. All right. Paul Oyama, thank you very much. All right. So now we are going to drop out uh, final exam. Going to leave Winston Marshall in, and we are going to bring back the odd couple. All right. We're back. Mark Andreco has chosen to go first here, Mark as the odd couple is back uh, all right here we go all right mark and drake are going to be fielding the a set of questions and mark again 30 seconds is the window five questions will be asked worth one point one point penalty if you miss it you may also simply say pass mm -hmm. i will not tell you if you get a question correct or incorrect you will not know the outcome until everybody's gone and we assess and tally the points uh last two things Thing one, I'm going to ask you a question that's just practice to make sure that our connection is fair. So as quick as you can, please answer your best attempt at this question. What university did I attend? Wake Forest. Well done, sir. The Demon Deacon. I and knew that, that without that. So, and Mark, just and Mark and Jacob, just know that you will, just to look up, you will have a clock up there if you see it. You oh, see the, you'll see oh the great. Clock. Awesome. Cool. Thank yeah. you. I didn't realize yeah. that. All right, Mark, you understand how that works then? So here we I go. Do. Your time will not start until I've finished asking this question. Okay. Which actor plays musician Bad Blake in Crazy Heart? Uh, Jeff Bridges. Who stars as Catherine Murtoyle in 1999's Cruel Intentions? Uh, Sarah Michelle Keller. Who directed The Road Warrior? Uh, 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 George Miller. What year saw the release of Unforgiven? 1997. In what film does Nicolas Cage have to steal the Declaration of Independence? National Treasure. Mark Andreco's questioning is complete. All right. So we're removing Mark, bringing in Jeff. All right, Jeff. So, Mark, same thing here for Jeff. All right, Jeff, welcome back to the show. Uh, the speed round is about to commence for you. Um, you get a point if you get it correct. If you miss a question, you do lose a point. You can also pass. Uh, just to test our connection, I want to make sure that you can hear me okay. So I'm going to ask you a question, a practice one, as fast as you can, give me an answer. Who is the second greatest New England Patriot of all time? Julian Edelman. Okay, controversial, but we'll accept it for a point. Uh, Jeff, your questioning will not begin as far as the time goes. You have a 30 second time window, but we're not going to start it until after the first question is asked. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, here we go, Jeff, to complete the speed round. Who plays the lead role of Larry Donner in Throw Mama from the Train? Billy Crystal. What actress plays Maria Von Trapp in The Sound of Music? Pass. What year saw the release of Martin Campbell's Casino Royale? Pass. Who directed Sean Connery in The Untouchables? Brian De Palma. Paul Newman and Robert Redford played two grifters in what 1973 film? Hey. Casino right. Okay. All right. So we are going to tally up. We're going to remove the odd couple. Mark, I'm going to do a little tallying here, and you're going to entertain uh, the crowd for a moment. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this doesn't get edited out because it's not a – well – We'll see about that. The real question here is Master Splinter. You gotta wonder at some point, did he have the Ninja Turtles rob a bank? And here's why I pose that premise. How do they afford all that stuff that they live in under the sewer? 
How do they afford the Domino's Pizza? They must have robbed somebody. They don't have a charity basket that they hand around because nobody knows that they actually exist. So while the foot's out there doing a lot of crimes, I'm willing to bet he probably didn't even tell the other turtles. Probably just told Leonardo, hey, go knock off this bank with your ninja skills. Don't tell the others. Just come back here. Give me the money and we'll never talk about it again. That is my conspiracy theory when it comes to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now, when you look at Leonardo, he can keep a secret. He's a leader. Donatello, he's the brains of the operation. Michelangelo, fun, put him on the billboards. Why do we need Raphael? And I, I hear you out there screaming, oh, because he's great in a fight. Because he's great in a fight? He is a locker room anti-hero. He's basically feeding off of the turtles with their positive energy, and then his negative energy adds to the equation. And basically what you're left with is a wild card, a Lewis Cannon, and Antonio Brown. You need to cut him from the Ninja Turtles, and my power just got shut off because apparently Raphael is the building manager. All right, Mark Ellis, uh, look, it happens. All right, so we're going to bring everybody back here, and we have Roxy Stride. We have the odd couple. All right, so what I'm going to do is here. I'm hey, going to go on. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Reason, to be honest. All right. I don't think so we need them anymore. All right, so the odd couple and final exam here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through your individual scores and let you know uh, who did what when it comes to final exam. Lon Harris got the first question of Jeff Bridges right. He passed on Sarah Michelle Geller. Got George Miller correct incorrect for unforgiven the answer was 1992 and uh, he got national treasure correct paul oyama got all five correct for five points that is seven points altogether lon harris scoring two paul scoring five so that's seven points for final exam mark andraco got jeff bridges correct got sarah michelle geller correct got george miller correct missed with unforgiven that answer was 1992 1992 and got national treasure correct for three points altogether for mark and draco jeff snyder got billy crystal passed on julie andrews passed on 2006 got brian de palma correct got the sting correct three points six points all together for a score right now of 38 35 odd couple three points and the fi final exam has caught up a little bit here mark as we get into the fifth and final round that's right christian as we go to schmodown after dark am i going to give you the rules around five or tell a spooky story wait to find out it's going to be the rules around number five because we're still going here in the schmodown come hell or high water or any other jeff bridges movie that crosses our path in round number five, the round that will determine the match, unless we go to sudden death overtime, at which point I'll have to go by candlelight. Each team gets three questions. Now, these questions range in point value. Two points for the first one, then three points, then five points. However, although it is the team format, teams may only confer with their members for the five-point question. So the other two questions, here's how it works. We give you a category for that two-pointer. And then the team is going to have to determine which member is going to answer that one solo. You may not rely on your teammates' knowledge for the two-point question. The opposite teammate will then answer the three-point question. And then we will meet at the five-point question. How do we get those numbers? How do we get those questions? We need three integers from each team. These integers can range from 1 to 20. So, again, the odd couple, Christian. Now it's a three <coughs> They're going to give wow. us their three favorite numerals from 1 to 20. Gentlemen, what feels lucky? Three. Eleven. You guys and want four, me to take the last and one? 16. And okay, 16. And now, final exam? Yeah. So, uh, let's go so 7, 15, and 12. All right. So, Roxy, you're going to get 60 seconds to talk to your team starting now. You guys... We're coming down to it here. The only way to ensure that we win is to make sure you guys take your time here. Use your JTs if you need this. We have a lead, but we still have to make sure we're hitting at least our three and our five here, guys. So right now, this is your game to win. Picture yourselves playing for that belt. Picture yourselves wearing those belts again. We know what that feels like. We've been there before, and I know you guys can absolutely do it again. This is your game right now. It really is. 
Um, and I'm so proud of you guys for getting to this point and for us being in, in this position right now. You're doing an amazing job. Let's stay strong, Draco. Mentally strong. Here we go. Make it, make it yes, for you guys. Draco, yeah? You got this? Yes, ma'am. Yes. We're, we're in it to win it. Let's do this. Second number, right. baby. Good picks. All right, Winston, 60 seconds starting now. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you off top, you got three, three JTs and a challenge, so there's that. But I want to tell you a very quick story since we only got a little time left. A guy named Ace Cabrera was in the Star Wars tournament finals and was down going into the fifth round. And now he's playing to take that belt away from Alex Damon and the rock stars in December. And that's about what's, that's what's gonna happen right now. You guys are behind going into this, but you have been cool as cucumbers since that first round. So let's handle our business. Let's win this tournament. And then Lon, I'll hand you the keys to your new place, baby. Oh yeah. So it's TSA, okay. we handle it. That's what's up. TS mother loving A. Let's go. All right. So thank you to Winston and Roxy. All right. So the way we're going to do this here, uh, this is going to be final exam first. They're down by three. So they're going to have to answer <laughs> two and their three here. Uh, all right. So guys, for your first category, for your first category, you chose number seven. That's scores and soundtracks. Who's taking the two point? How do you feel about that? you feel okay about that one? Or you not really. really take it? If you if you feel good about scores and soundtracks, I would say you should take that one. I can take it. Okay. I'm not good at that category. All <laughs> right. I'm gonna admit Paul, it on you. Paul Oyama for a two point question, scores and soundtracks. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Which composer wrote the music for all three of the Lord of the Rings films? Howard Shore. For two points. All right. So now to take the lead, Lon Harris. You have number 15, and that is 90s movies. Okay. 90s movies. Here is your three-point question. Here it is. All right. Which Oscar winner stars as Max Klein in the 1999, excuse me, the 1993 Peter Weir film Fearless? Hmm. Uh, uh, I believe this is also Jeff Bridges. For three points. All right. So now we see ourselves here as the final exam takes their first lead in a bit. And it is now 40-38. And the odd couple will have an opportunity to tie it, to tie it here with this question here. Mark, this is number three. That's right, Christian. And category three corresponds to a man who I see every time I look in the mirror, Mr. Brad Pitt. Who's taking I, mean, I, I can get it unless you feel confident, Andrew. Right um, if you want to take it, yeah, take it. Yeah, I'll take it. All right, here it is. Draco seems a little disappointed. You didn't get to answer it. Brad Do you Pitt. want it? No, I'm good. I'm good. Too late now. All right, Jeff. Brad Pitt movies for two points and the tie. What was the first film directed by Quentin Tarantino, which starred Brad Pitt? Five, four. Inglorious Bastards. That is correct. And Christian, we have a tied ball game. To stick with the odd couple here who can take the lead and opportunity to win. Have here you go, Mark. Game. It's five. So there's a three pointer here. And number 11. Number That's 11. Right. And 11. Mark Rippon's legendary number corresponds to Mark Andraco's category of comic book movies. Here we are, Mark Andreco for three points and a three-point lead. Here we go, comic book movies. Which hand, actor... hand and Snyder need your hands up, please. And same with Andreco. Sorry. Which actor plays Victor Von Doom in the 2015 film Fantastic Four? Toby Kebbell. It is a three-point lead for the odd couple, Chris. Yes, Can Mark. Exam answer. All right, so odd couple has put them now in a position to win the game should should final exam miss however if final exam hits they will once again take the lead and force the odd couple to hit their five pointer gentlemen you can confer on this question all right and so just a reminder both final exam and the odd couple all have three jte rules left all right gentlemen Final exam shows category 12. 
and that would be in the realm of comedy. Ha ha. Comedy. <laughs> Wrong All right. Wrong Here it is. What TV sitcom actor co-stars with Jeff Daniels in the 1997 legal comedy Trial and Error? It's uh, it's Michael Richards, Paul. Yes. Kramer. Let's go with that. Go ahead. Michael Richards, final answer. Correct for five points. Final exam, staying alive, forcing the odd couple here. Five points. Five points. Now, here is how it works. If odd couple hits it, they go on to play Shazam. They go on to play Shazam for the titles. However, if they miss it, then final exam will go on to play Shazam. All right, Mark, they chose category number 16. That's right. A fellow named Joe Montana used to wear it, and now the odd couple can further seal their greatness if they can get this five-point question correct in the category of fantasy science fiction. And gentlemen, the question... Was he hands, by the way? Sorry. Just... Yeah. For the win. To compete at the Schmodown Spectacular... <laughs> What musician plays Heather Gummer in 1990's Tremors? Oh, Reba McIntyre. I'm sure it's Reba McIntyre. I'm 100% sure. Reba McIntyre, final answer. And you're winners! Advancing to the Schmodown Spectacular! The former champion, the young of the couple, the odd couple do it. They win it. The odd couple is making it to the Schmodown Spectacular. <coughs> Reba McIntyre takes the odd couple to the Spectacular. Jeff Snyder wins the tournament. Mark Andrago goes to his first Spectacular. Roxy Stryer taking the odd couple to the title match once again. This is a long road back to the championships that you guys lost back uh, back to the Shire Wolves. So yeah. let's start with you here, Mark and Draco. You knew that one. You were confident in it. You're ready. And the final exam pushed you to the very limit. How you feeling there, Mark? Um, it's easy to say this because we won, but this is the kind of game that I want to play. This is the kind of game I want to watch. They, when we're playing with teams of this caliber, those two points you missed at the beginning, it's all front-loading your game. Um, uh, I'm I'm so, so grateful at the risk of sounding like an Oscar speech to Jeff for always believing in me and for Roxy for always being there and for making this possible. Roxy, this would not have been possible with any other manager, so thank you, and I love you guys both. Let's talk to that manager. Roxy, where are your emotions at right now? It, it's a big win in this tournament and getting that crown, but now... You got that spectacular ahead as well. So what are you feeling? What's running through your mind right now? You know, I don't know what it is about the state of the world right now that makes you just feel like you need a win. Um, and these boys just keep delivering for me in a time in which I can't describe to you how much I need a win. So this is everything. Um, and I am so happy for them because I think that they need that win too. And it was a, an unbelievable match, but it's odds time to shine. Um, and it's our time to get those belts back and we deserve them and we're ready for them. Uh, Jeff Snyder, this is a second victory over who, Jeff, uh, look, when I think about great rivalries over the years, and I think of maybe whether it's Roca and Merle or Cushing and Kalinowski, people who push themselves to the brink in every match, it seems to be what you and Oyama have been doing with each other here lately. Do you believe he's one of your greatest rivals that you've been playing uh, in your career? Oyama, every time I step in the ring with with Oyama, uh, I'm, I'm sweating bullets and, and I have to respect his stuff. Um, he definitely brought his A game today. We just brought our, our A plus game, particularly my partner, Mark Andreco, because I don't know that I would have gotten that five pointer without him. Uh, I was ready to kill him when he got unforgiven wrong, but I'll tell you, Andreco, baby, you're forgiven now. Well, look at that. So this is a chance um, Jeff, <laughs> let's talk about that, man. You got this is an opportunity, in, whether it's the rundown or, or any of these shows coming up next backstage. They all throw your name in as the greatest teams player of all time. You know, and I know that you like to throw your name in there as one of the greatest players. And I think it's hard, to, hard to argue. But 
How much is it going to mean to the Jeff Snyder and Odd Couple legacy to win those uh, that belt for the third time for you and a second time for the Odd Couple against Bibiani and the Kid? I think it's going to be indisputable. I think it's going to put Odd Couple right next to Patriots 1A, 1B as the greatest of all time, and it's going to cement my legacy on Rushmore. Like, I can't win three team belts and not be on Rushmore. Sorry, it doesn't work like that. So uh, true. Yeah, and Draco, so let's get back into this thing I asked you earlier in the in the uh, match about Bibiani. The last time you guys faced each other for a ch title, it was the singles match. It came down to one question at the very end, uh, a five-pointer that you that, that you just didn't get. Um, and you have been waiting. You've been waiting to play him to get that victory. So how are you feeling going in to take a potential championship away from the Beast? Yeah, as you unmute yourself. There we you go. Got it. <laughs> No, it's sorry, good. sorry, sorry, guys. Uh, I'm a little, I'm a little scattered right now. Uh, it'll be great. It'll be fun. You know, I hope, I hope that it is a match of this, this sort of neck and neck caliber. Um, and I came into this, the Schmodown with Bibbs, so to be able to beat him in a regulation match would be great. I mean, it's, it's going to be great just playing those guys. It, it's so not, It feels. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy this win before I start second guessing stuff like that. But there's some nice there's some nice symmetry for me and Bibbs going up uh, against each other to wrap the season, and I can't think of a better way to end 2020. Uh, well, one, but that was taken care of on Tuesday. Uh, but uh, <laughs> this is going to be a really great spectacular, and no matter what happens, uh, I'm incredibly proud of my teammate and my manager, and to be a part of this. And uh, thanks to Christian and Mark for inventing this goofy game that has taken given me so much joy and so many great friends. So thank you guys. You're more than welcome. And Roxy, last question for you here. Yeah. This is, this is uh, something now you're going to be, you have two, you have three matches now at yeah. Spectacular. You're going to be in the Spectacular three times. And this is your second title match that you're going to have here. But how does it feel though? Because we call you guys have been the spoilers. This is, you've made it very hard for swag to catch corruption right now. They still have an opportunity to do it. They're not out of it, but you made it very hard for them right now. Is that, do you feel good about that? Is it about the odd couple? Is it, is it all combined? How are you feeling overall before and giving you the last word here? You know, we play to win, so I couldn't have, I couldn't think about whether I wanted swag or whether I wanted the crazy psycho that is Shannon. Um, I, I, that couldn't come into my head during this because, truthfully, I think that Winston has done a phenomenal job, and I, I hope that he does catch up to her. And I'm sorry that we've made that difficult for him, but I'm not really sorry to quote the millennials. Sorry, I'm not sorry because. This win was ours and, and we needed to get it and we did. And I will say that if this was a just based on the second half of the year, the rock stars have blown everybody out of the water. It has been so unbelievable um, in tournament season and what my players have been able to do. Uh, I just am so lucky and proud and so want to throw it in the face of everybody who said that odd couple should split up or that I should trade one of them away or all of the comments that came out of this. It's just, uh, it's ridiculous because the odd couple is the greatest team in the league and they have been for a really long time. Now, uh, thank you so much, Roxy. Uh, really appreciate it. Congratulations to the odd couple. Congratulations to Roxy. Now, this might be, I have to check with Frankie numbers. I think in a five round match, this might have broken the record. 48 to 45 was the final score here. 48 to 45. Massive, massive uh, victory here for the odd couple. All right, guys, thank you so much. And congratulations to the odd couple, the former champions who have an opportunity to become two time champions now that going spectacular. Let's bring in 45 points. 45 points, although couldn't get the actual the win here, but 45 points. Winston, let's start with you, man. Look, this is the same kind of question. This is a hard one to swallow, but it's also a hard one to feel bad about when your team yeah. scores 45 points. Yeah, um, you know, I, I had a vision uh, when we went into the draft about these two gentlemen coming together and, and making a force, and they really did. I mean, you can't shake a fist at 45. Uh, I'll tell you this, at 45 is probably my least favorite number. So if there was anything in the cards for me on that, that's probably what that had to do with. But I, I got nothing bad at all to say about these gentlemen. Quite the contrary. I, I have everything good and wonderful and, and praiseworthy to say about Paul and Lon. Uh, this has been the wildest ride maybe in my life just the, the 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 highs and the lows, man. But like consistently, this has become just like 
something that you can't necessarily describe. It's 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 what Roxy talks about the odd couple with. It's it's lawn drives me crazy disappearing every two seconds, but like that's part of the charm of this is that these two have become my brothers and that riding into battle with them has been an absolute honor. Um, so that being said, I, the one, the last thing I'll just say off, off the topic, I do find it funny that Roxy was saying that like, she does hope that I get it just now wasn't the time. You do understand for me to get it since you did wish well on me, I do strip that belt from Alex Damon. So I do appreciate the good luck that you did hand me at the end of your speech there, but I have nothing but love for the rock stars, you guys are the tournament champions for a reason. So I wish you all the luck taking on Shazam, yo. Uh, Lon, Paul, can ask you very simply, final exam. Is it going to be a team next year? Is that, I don't, do we get to decide that? I don't think that's up to me. Uh, if it was up to me, <laughs> I would say totally. I, I'm I'm down to try, to try again. I, I mean, I don't think... I, you know, I, I think this is probably, despite we, we, we ended up losing on points, but I think this is maybe the best individual game I've ever played. And, and I feel like Paul brings out the best in me and I would be totally happy to come. I mean, if I have to do all this hard work again, I would, I would <laughs> want to do it. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that kind of off of that question from Ellis, Paul, is that, you know, right now there are no championships this season. Um, Winston's going to have some very difficult choices at the end of the season. It is possible that you guys stick with Winston. Uh, it is possible that you go somewhere else. Um, you know, if if you are able to make that decision, you know, if if Winston decides to keep you in lawn, is that something that you'd be interested in doing and taking another run with final exam uh, next season? I don't want to make any of Winston's decisions for him. Uh, you know, I'd love to be back. He's been an incredible manager and like changed the entire way that I see and approach the game. But um, I just want to kind of take some time out to shout out every person in our faction that made us getting here possible. People like Frank Moran, people like Sean Gerber, Liz Shannon Miller, Chandru, Ace, uh, Josh Bakuga, Demi, like all of these people are the reason that we're here. And we, we wouldn't even be, have been close without all of them. And it does suck. Um, to feel like you kind of let them down a little bit. Our two losses are, are just me not playing as good as I, I should be in round one. And, um, you know, obviously we still came back and made it a close game, but it, it is super frustrating to feel like, um, you know, this is a team, they're, they're good enough, they're going to capitalize on your mistakes and you can't afford to play anything less than your best game. And we didn't play our best game today and that's the reason that we lost. We were so close, but if we just would have been a little sharper, um, particularly me, I think it, it would have been a better outcome, maybe a different outcome. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't want you to, I don't want you to beat yourself up on that, man. Yeah. I mean, we all, we all, we all have those slip ups. It's, it's like, it's, it's funny. Cause Roxy was saying earlier that it's not about how you start about how you finish. Um, it's about how you play the game overall. But what, what is so impressive is even if it is that you maybe didn't get that little start boost in Mario Kart, you were flawless on all those turns throughout the rest of it, bro. So I don't want you to be to be hounding on yourself at all. You guys played a phenomenal game. All right, so uh, Roxy said it, Winston said it. You do have one more match here with the Rockstars, uh, and that comes up in the first match of the Spectacular. Andres Cabrera going up, Winston, against Alex Damon, and that is a crucial match now. It, it, without that victory, you cannot win the faction championship. So uh, it's you versus the rock stars once again. And I will say before we let you go here, final words to your two competitors, uh, Lon Harris and Paul Yama for the season that they had. Uh, the final thing that I'll say is that, hey, first of all, uh, thank you for making my inaugural season as a manager uh, an absolute delight. It has been amazing to, you know, stay up late and ask random trivia questions and laugh. You guys made me watch Aubrey Hepburn movies, which mm -hmm. she's a phenomenal actress, but I, I just don't like older films personally, but you guys made me do it and I love it. And um, I'll see y'all on the other side, man. I will do, I will see you on the other side. Once we get this this faction title and we hold on to those two belts, I'll see y'all next year. All right, thank you to Winston Marshall and congratulations to Final Exam for a hell of a season and of a hell of a finals here. What a match it was. Thank you so much to the team of Swag. Mark, it was such a battle here. Once again, don't forget that this was one of the 
48 to 45. I got to assume that this is a record in a five round match an overall match points. I don't ever remember anybody scoring that many points. So uh, this is what a battle it was. They tested themselves to the to, to the very end. The speed round was intense. The betting round. I mean, all of it. This was one of the best matches all season. Easily one of the best teams matches. And it has the odd couple, the former champions moving on to face Shazam. Yeah, it, you add the two to get, and then you carry the one, and it, it's 93 points were scored today. 93 wow. points changed hands. No steals available in round number two. The betting round, they both wagered a game amount of points, got that question correct, and then you saw what happened with those five point questions. And Christian, this is this is why the movie Trivia Schmodown exists is for matches like this in a championship setting. Can you bring your best when you need your best? And we saw the best twice today one was just a little bit better than the other i think that hot take here but i think roxy stryer is starting to make a really strong push for manager of the year i know i know that you probably think that shannon and winston are still the two front runners and you'd be right to say that i just think that what roxy has done or remember alex damon got very far in the inner geekdom tournament jeff snyder made it to the finals the odd couple won the tournament there was a lot that Roxy did and had a very, t- and Stacey Howard beats Gray Drake. I mean, she's had some great, great performances on the second half of the season. And now she has herself three matches, three matches at the Spectacular. And if she comes out of all three of those with wins, going to be very hard to decide. Maybe Roxy can be manager of the year here. If everybody who was giving her crap over the season saying, oh, she's the worst, she doesn't know how to manage. Well, she's gotten she's got three matches here, three big matches at the spectacular. And what a match it was. The odd couple. What and what a story it was. Mark Andreco, who's never I was thinking about it this morning. Said, Mark Andreco's never been into a spectacular before. And now he's going for the team's championship. And now he gets to do it against his arch nemesis, William Bibiani, who he's never beaten. Uh Jeff Snyder with the opportunity to win his third team's championship. William Bibiani and the kid trying to defend it. Swag needing to beat Roxy Stryer and Alex Demon in order to even stay in the race of the faction championship. The spectacular is loaded and it's right around the corner. All you need to do is get the tickets to SchmodownLive.com. You got the Star Wars Championship, Cabrera versus Damon. You have Jericho versus Brittany Young. The Teams Championship, Shazam versus the Odd Couple. The Inner Geekdom Championship, Chandru the Chosen going up against Chance Ellison from Corruption, Kevin Smith. He faces Brett Sheridan from the den. And finally, Adam Collins, the phenom, faces dangerous Dan Merle for the singles championship. This is the most stacked, craziest, intense Schmodown Spectacular Mark we've ever had. And it's the fifth one. What a card it is. How exciting it's going to be for us to call it together, partner. And that's the mark of a great match is that one question gets answered. Now we know who's advancing to the spectacular, but it also gave us a ton of questions, most of them about what will ensue with that carnage at the spectacular. Will Roxy upset everyone and end up getting manager of the year? Is Odd Couple ready and primed to take down Shazam? And most important of all, What in God's name was Winston filming in his bed? Who knows? But if you guys want to be part of the spectacular, pretty easy way to do it. And this is what I would say. Join Patreon today. Patreon.com slash Schmodown. Join at the $10 tier. It's going to be worth it. You're going to get a lot of free agency uh, exclusives and interviews and things that only patrons can get as we get to the offseason and all the pay-per-views. Working on some big things for Season 8. Cannot wait to share that with you. A lot of stuff going to happen to the spectacular. You don't want to watch this one late. So for the odd couple, for final exam, for Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff. We'll see you next time. Thanks to all our fans for keeping the lights on. Well, you know.